session is titled Technology Devices and Addressing Social Isolation. And we're going to be highlighting three approaches that were achieved to capitalizing on critical relief funds during the COVID-19 pandemic response. Our present presenters for today are Krista Kramer, ATP from the Idaho Assistive Technology Program, Jeannie Kroll, MS, CC, SLP, ATP, Director of the North Dakota Assistive Technology Program, and Sonia Scheibel with the Virginia Assistive Technology Systems. Just a few reminders as we're going through today's session. If you wish to see captions, click on the CC button on the control panel at the bottom of your screen. Please enter any questions or comments in the chat window and we'll address those questions and comments at the conclusion of this discussion. Be sure to check out the AT3 Centered website at our events page for upcoming events following the Leadership Symposium. And we will continue to send out registration links through the listserv. Please complete any post webinar surveys when you receive them. We really always like to hear from you on what your hot topics are. Starting today's conversation will be Krista Kramer from Idaho and Idaho's COVID-19 story. Good morning. I'm Krista Kramer and I got volunteered to share Idaho's response to the COVID-19 social isolation issues. Our initial response was pulling together a wide variety of resource lists on issues related to distance communication. And the QR code on, or the link on this slide will send you to our family communication tablet. And this was inspired by a New York Times article early in the pandemic about ICU hospital staff trying to cope with keeping their patients connected to families who weren't allowed in to see them. It links to topics such as um, developing communication plans, video communication options, phone communication, hospital emergency and ISG, ICU communication options, AAC and sanitizing issues around the use of this technology. All right, next slide. While I was developing this Padlet, um, I found a wide range of emergency planning materials for people with disabilities, but very little that addressed the issues for people with communication dis disabilities who were suddenly being separated from the family supports and interpreters who could help them communicate. Result was, this emergency communication um, planning document, which includes scenarios to think through in advance and a communication profile form to document and share information about speech and hearing skills and needs, vision and reading issues and other communication challenges such as autism, intellectual disability, mental illness, dementia, um, along with the communication device details and the support systems um, contact information. <clears throat> Next slide. Um, so as COVID funding began to appear, we entered stage two, which I refer to as the hurting cats phase. <laughs> um, many organizations statewide were receiving funding um, including the Commission on Aging, the Centers for Independent Living, the Council for the Deaf and Hard of Hearing, Health and Welfare, and they were all trying to respond to disability-related needs. The Idaho Telehealth Task Force was established, various foundations were making funds available, and during that phase, I spent a lot of energy trying to track everyone who had plans to distribute iPads <laughs> and working to reduce the duplicated efforts and to identify the gaps. Next slide, stage three. As we move from emergency response into long-term planning issues, 
my focus became how to respond to social isolation, particularly in the long-term care facilities. Beyond the organizations who were saying, iPads, 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 there were those resisting iPads. Um, some responded with robotic pets. Um, one of the organizations wanted to use their funding to install captioned phones in all the facilities until I put on my INR hat and let them know that captioned phones are available for free <laughs> to people with documented hearing loss. They went, oh. What was not being addressed at that point in time was overall communication accessibility, the mask issues, the amplification for distance conversations, the window visits. Um, nobody was talking about the accessories, what cases and mounting systems and headsets and how do you connect that little tiny um, staff person's smartphone to a big screen so um, the residents could actually see. And nobody was talking about how do you use the accessibility settings on, on the devices, let alone captioning for the video calls. Next slide. We've had a long-term relationship with our area agencies on aging ombudsman program. We fondly called them the ombuddies. Um, and very early on, we partnered with them to survey all of the long-term care facilities in the state regarding their access to video calling technology and the kind of communication needs of their residents to get some data on the scope of the need. There was a follow-up um, in July, and again, as part of our application process for what became the Communication Access Program. We also partnered with the Department of Health and Welfare's um, Division of Licensing and Certification, who oversees every long-term care facility in the state. And with their assistance, we were able to provide training for all 461 directors of long-term care facilities statewide and all the ombudsmen who are in each of those buildings when not under COVID restrictions. The largest of the area agencies on aging decided to contract with us beginning last September to respond to the social isolation by providing communication technology but to, at both the facility level and the individual level. So since then, I've been testing equipment, talking with facilities, assembling communication kits, and trying to write simple instruction sheets. That's a challenge. Um, and they're almost ready to go out the door on long-term loan. Next slide. In response to each application that we've received for the CAP program, I've interviewed the facility director and sometimes the SLP, OT, and activities director, and taken time to educate them about the kinds of equipment um, that you know about, but they didn't. The general items that we're including in our communication kits includes iPads, if the facility doesn't already have them, um, with a case that has a stand, and better yet, a stand that doubles as a uh, handle, Many of the problems that they shared with me are about how difficult it is for the residents to hold an iPad for a video call um, and how many iPads they've had broken as a result. I introduced them to using an iPad for speech to text supports. We talk about headsets, I'll get into that one in a minute. Um, and a few of the facilities have asked about mounting arms or rolling mounts especially the skilled nursing facilities who have a lot of residents who spend too much of their time in bed. I tell them about full duplex intercom systems for window visits that allow hands-free open communication channel and don't require electrical outlets for both parties or for both parties to have access to a phone. 
<laughs> or to have the windows open. One director told me that not only were residents and guests opening windows for window visits, but that they actually found residents going out the windows to be with the visitors. <laughs> Yikes. We also wanted to address social isolation within the facilities. Very, very often the uh, residents are isolated from the staff and from each other by lack of access to personal amplification. So we included pocket talkers and small personal voice amplifiers. Our data actually showed a very high percentage of folks that couldn't be heard by the staff. Um, yeah, then there's the age old battles over the TV volume and I've been introducing them to some of the inexpensive responses to that. Um, with each pocket talker um, that we include in the kits, we've included at least one headset, headphone or earbud that's completely wipeable, cleanable as an alternative to the foam co covered ones that um, come with the devices. And because we chose an older model that requires a mono headset, we also had to include a mono to stereo adapter um, to allow use of the alternate headsets. Another of the issues that came up um, is that most Bluetooth headsets now aren't shipped with charging blocks. So we included a power strip block that has USB charging ports, as well as regular electric sockets. And we're making inroads with facilities that have ventilator units. There are only three in the entire state. Um, and we're now working to meet some individualized specific communication challenges for those residents who face not only voice limitations, but many have paralysis issues as well. Back to the oh, next slide. Back to the headset issue. Um, this project sent me on a quest for the perfect headset and I'm still searching. <laughs> oh, please uh, tell me your favorites in the chat box. Um, I'd really love your feedback. The over the ear cup style um, with the active noise cancellation does a great job of filtering out background noise, such as the oxygen machines and the ventilation systems and anyway, but they get rejected by people who don't like the weight or the pressure on their head or don't wanna mess up their hair. I really like the color speakers, um, like the one on the upper left. They're comfortable. They allow the individuals to wear their hearing aids if they have them. Bone conduction headsets like either the ones in the arms of these sunglasses or the ones that hook over the ears can be really helpful for someone with a conductive hearing loss. But all of these are Bluetooth with all the headaches of pairing and renewing connections that for the most part, the uh, facility staff need to deal with. Wired headsets are easy, plug and go, but the wires are always a hassle, um, tangling and hard to clean. The uh, style on the bottom right is one of my favorites. It's an ultra lightweight and it sits right in the outer part of the ear. So less earwax cleaning to deal with. Um, and then there's the crossover option. Headphones that include features of both a Bluetooth headset and an environmental amplifier or a transparency mode. Next slide. So I made my wish list of features. Number one, it had to be cleanable if it's going to be shared. Um, Bluetooth versus corded versus combo. Many of the Bluetooth headphones have a corded mode so that they're usable even when the battery dies. That's a feature. Um, active noise cancellation or isolation. Um, 
to insulate the listener from background noise active noise canceling microphone to reduce how much the person on the other end of the video call hears of that background noise. Um, we experimented with boom microphones. Most of the ones I trialed, unfortunately, didn't sound as good as the microphones that were built into the earpiece of the over the ear ones or the caller speakers. You want good sound quality both in and out. Um, long battery life and easing, easy charging point port access. Big tactile buttons with clear markings next to impossible to find. Uh, you want a simple interface, lightweight, clear instructions, durable, affordable. Yeah, right. <laughs> I fell in love with um, this headset the Be Here Access headset. Um, it's a combination headset that's both a hearing amplifier and a Bluetooth headset. It's got big tactile buttons, still black on black, um, but it can be personalized to your hearing profile using a smartphone app. It's got a charging dock, so you don't have to plug in the micro USB cable. And it even came with large print instructions. What a concept. But it's 350 bucks and three of the four that we've purchased haven't lasted more than six months. Um, the company did replace them, however. So do any of the headsets that you've um, suggested meet all these criteria? Anybody got a bingo? Please, please let me know. I forgot to set my timer. So I'm assuming I'm at the end of my um, time. If you want to go ahead to the next slide, there's an image of a communication cart that I've also been working on um, that's got a mount with an iPad and a uh, charging unit hidden away so that you can keep all of the uh, blocks, uh, all of the cords plugged in and make it easier so that everything doesn't get disassembled. Anyway, with that, I'm going to turn it over to the next speaker and take a moment to check your responses in the chat. All right. Thanks, Krista. I'm Jeannie Krull, and um, our, pro our project for this COVID um, season <laughs> this year was um, the COVID Equipment Distribution Program, and it was a collaboration between us and the Department of Human Services, Aging Services Division of North Dakota. And um, we um, get, got funding through uh, the Critical Relief Funds for COVID-19 through um, the ADRC. Next slide, Dave. Basically the gist of this program was to provide communications technology as well as assistive technology to long-term care facilities and individual residents um, to help them reduce, to get connected to their families and um, reduce social isolation and you know, get them access to internet and um, so they could do Zoom conferences and uh, as well as um, even just basic telephones. Next slide. Our timeline for this, we started in April of 20, so right out of the gate, and then it goes to uh, June 2021. Um, this actually will probably be ending because our funds are almost gone now. Um, we'll probably be ending um, by the end of this month, the end of April. And we were given approximately $240,000 um, through various sources, CARES Act dollars and um, Ombudsman um, funds and some other dollars, so we're not sure where they came from, but all funneled through um, the uh, aging services. In October, um, however, we were told, um, and this is a surprise to, to aging services as well, that we had to spend $100,000 of that money um, by December 30th um, in a certain category um, or would have to go back to the feds. And uh, so we, uh, we were able to do that, but that was, that was quite a rush. So next slide. And our audience was um, 
rural and base, real basic and skilled nursing facilities in North Dakota, as well as those in the metro areas. And um, we, we started off with the rural and basic and then um, as well as some individual residents who had some very specific needs. And then we went to um, the remaining, this last, we did four different rounds. So we started out with the rural and then we moved to um, those in the metro areas. And we were really hoping at the beginning that, that we would have funds for assisted living and then also individuals in their homes um, as well in rural areas. But um, we really only got the first two categories completed um, before we um, ran out of dollars. And um, with a few individuals within those nursing homes. And those were the priorities set by um, aging services. Next slide. Oh, and I forgot to mention those, those last two categories, it's possible that we might be able to find other dollars to serve those um, groups um, that hasn't been determined yet. So how do we get this, um, these funds out to these people? and um, or these nursing homes. And what we did was look at the state and um, look at the uh, populations in each county and um, determine the rural nests and also um, looked at the number of beds within each home, nursing home, and came up with the formula. So nursing homes received between 750 to $2,000 worth of assistive technology and communications technology. Um, as I said before, we did it in four rounds and the first round was in the summer and uh, we, um, did a survey to determine their needs as far as Wi-Fi needs, staff skill level, uh, current equipment that they had and so on. We ended up not continuing with that survey um, due to lack of time and with that deadline of spending the first 100,000 um, by December, we really needed to uh, hurry up. Um, so we decided to eliminate that, that piece. Um, next slide. So each administrator was contacted um, of each facility and to do an assessment of equipment needs for their particular facility. We really catered um, the equipment um, ordering to, to their needs and as well as the needs of their residents, of course, which are the main reason we're doing this. And it was really unique. We've never had this opportunity and I see Krista's group did too, uh, being able to connect with um, the, you know, well, we maybe connect with a few nursing home administrators throughout the years, um, but but never pretty much all of them in the state, and um, and that really um, gave us kind of a captive audience, and we were decided to do with many of them some Zoom videos and do device demonstrations with them, as far as their um, individual residents had hearing and um, uh, speech needs uh, in regards to like voice amplifiers, AAC devices and um, personal listening systems for some examples. And then we also went into talking about our other programs to help beyond and really kind of start building this relationship with them. Um, so I'm hoping they would come back after um, this COVID grant, grant is over. Um, and so we started talking about our TEDS program, our I Can Connect program, and then of course, all of our um, other assistive technology um, programs as well. And so that was really, really nice. And some actually have come back already. Um, and all of the devices that we purchased for this um, grant were entered into our inventory system and then given to them an open-ended loan. And this was so, we are so glad we did this. I've already had several incidents of um, the ombudsman um, trying to communicate with the individual um, using the new equipment and finding that it was nowhere to be found. And in some cases we found that the um, the nursing home hadn't even taken it out of the box yet. Uh, in one case, we found out that the nursing home had been using the iPads for charting. So it's, um, it was really nice to be able to um, have that leverage to go back and say, you know, this really needs to be used and uh, for the reason it was purchased and, um, or we need it back and we'll need to give it to someone else. Um, uh, next slide. Devices, here's some, uh, Little capture of some of the devices. Um, of course, iPads, our favorite stand in the world right now is the Levo book stand um, and, and tablet stand. That's the tablet stand there. That's a nice cast iron bottom. It's one of our, our favorites and we were using it before and we'll continue to use it as long as we can. It's, it's a really good stand for 189 bucks for those of you that aren't in the know. Um, one of the voice amplifiers that we um, 
gave out was um, the Zoe Tech voice amplifiers about $36 on Amazon. And believe it or not, it really does have the quality of, of the Chatterbox, which is about a $250 device that, gosh, I've been using since the 90s. And um, it, uh, it was a great device to be able to give out. And because of the price, we were able to give it up, give, you know, several of them to the nursing homes. We did Bluetooth headsets and um, dual lock to, um, you know, connect the iPads to the stands. Uh, large monitors um, with the iPad connectors to give uh, you know, big screens um, for the iPads for um, those with vision impairments. We did laptops and desktops, echo shows. Um, and then in some cases, um, by the time we're done here, we'll work with five individuals in these nursing homes um, that have gotten them AAC or iPads with AAC apps. Next slide. We also put together training webinars um, for uh, the nursing home staff and residents. And my, my favorite training that we did was for one of the residents who was getting the AAC app and iPad. And um, I swear to God, the whole entire nursing home show staff showed up in this room, which wasn't safe, but um, the, to show that the level of interest for that individual um, it was so cool that they all wanted to get that training to help this this gal. So um, that was that was pretty cool. That's kind of one of my highlights. But um, and then we also um, put a video conferencing resource section on our website um, to help people with, with instructions on how to get connected. Just a little picture of our staff, some of our staff in a, one of our meetings. Um, would you go to the next slide? And. As of December 20th, um, we have provided equipment to over 110 um, nursing homes throughout the state, uh, 1,250 to be exact. And um, I will be updating these slides uh, to give this presentation ag again um, with the January through March uh, data. I, I think we're gonna be close to 120, 130 homes. Um, I have no idea how many pieces of equipment, probably another 100 to 200 pieces so but we'll probably be done by the end of april next slide so how did we get this opportunity i think i, I know um I'm, I'm wondering myself how to really dive in and get connected to the education system i know that some of you are good at that and um, and this is kind of our thing we've been working with um, the department of human services aging services division since uh, really closely since 2003 um, when we were actually in state government and not a nonprofit. And um, we are housed under VR and, um, and it made sense at the time, um, which then that's also under human services that we take over their assistant safety device um, distribution program back in 2003, which is our senior safety program, as well at the exact same time, the, um, the TEDS program. And so we've been doing that for 18 years and that's just been an ongoing thing. And, and we've been building that relationship um, we've done a lot of things with them. And, and at the same time COVID came along, we also, um, they also asked us to do um, assessments and training for the caregiver support program as a fee for service, which, and that is, um, uh, provides equipment and training and assessment of need um, to caregivers um, to get them uh, like iPads and echo shows and things like that to communicate with family and uh, medical providers. Um, and then we also, about four or five years ago, we worked with aging services to get assistive technology evaluations in the HCBS uh, Medicaid waiver for the aged and disabled and in our state. And, uh, and that, and so we got that in there, but then um, we um, didn't have, nobody's really referred to us until just last month. So finally that, that has started. So we're pretty excited that that's, and we've had like four calls since. So just, just in this last month. So that's pretty cool. And uh, we've also been doing money follows the person evaluations to get individuals out of nursing homes and also through aging services. And then we are working currently on a train the trainer project um, to build um, assistive technology capacity with uh, caregivers and, and supporting staff and, and um, in rural areas. And this is hopefully gonna be funded through Money Follows a Person roll up dollars. If not, we're gonna find funds other in other places. So that's all I have.
On to you, Sonia. All right, well, thank you very much. Um, and let's see, those do not look familiar. There we go. <laughs> oh, um, I just wanted to say those those extra slides at the end are about the senior safety and the TEDS program. I just included those for you guys just so you have information about those programs. All right, back to you. All good. All right. So CARES Act funding through Noron Dorper, Virginia. So um, next slide. Thanks. So um, first of all, what is Virginia No Wrong Door? I think uh, what I learned is that there, No Wrong Door is different for every state. So just trying to figure out what No Wrong Door is for Virginia, it took a little while years ago, but the purpose of No Wrong Door for Virginia is to increase referral assistance. No Wrong Door uses the common application databases, counseling, and public facing websites to help individuals connect with appropriate long-term support services. Through a variety of tools, no wrong door provides the ability to connect. Excuse me, Sonia. Yes. Your, your audio is um, breaking up. Can um, can you sit closer or modify it in some way? I can try. Is it better? That is better. Yes. Thank okay. You. I moved close to my computer, so I was going to turn off uh, the audio, but I'm like, go yeah. ahead. Are you connected through, or is your audio through your laptop or your um, a phone? It's through my laptop. Uh, you may want to uh, use your audio through phone because I think uh, because of the rain, your internet connection is a little wobbly. Okay. And uh, you do that. Nice. Oops. Is it better if I sit closer? It, it is better. Okay, can we just try that first? Yes. Okay, let's do that. And I would turn on my video, but I am like, all you can see probably are my lips. So <laughs> not gonna go there. Um, so um, anyway, no wrong door. I just read to you what the, um, what the no wrong door database for members of No Wrong Door to be able to make referrals and to um, give referrals and or take or get referrals and um, so that's nice and there's also a public search site for all Virginians that can go and look for resources for different issues that they may have. In Virginia there are 25 triple A's and there are 228 network partners or members. So have the next slide. Thank you. How the funding came to be. So Dave asked this about how did you get the funding? Uh, I, I'm sorry to interrupt again, but it, it, the sound is really all right. Poor. Let's see. Poor. So tell me how to do it on my phone. I haven't done it in a while. I haven't either. Um, let's see. Again. It, so um, I I'm not seeing, can somebody help me help her? I'm not seeing it on my toolbar. Oh, so this is how you do it. You go over on the toolbar to the microphone uh -huh. and you click on the arrow next to it. Right. Leave computer and, and, a, and a menu comes up and it says switch to uh, phone audio. Okay. Okay. And then I call. Well, the you don't have to leave or anything. Um, it'll it'll walk you through it. So just right. follow the prompts. Okay. So there is a phone number I have to call. Okay. I need to mute on my computer. That was telling me. Yes, just follow the prompts and, and we'll patiently wait until uh, okay. until you come back with good audio. Thanks.
All right, can you hear me now? Yes, great. Yay, is it better? <laughs> Please it is this. better. Let's see if okay. it stays better. <laughs> okay, <laughs> awesome. All right, well, um, so anyway, so getting back to the slide, how the funding came to be. So again, that's, um, that's an already established a relationship with the AAAs in Virginia. There are specifically seven AAAs we um, had provided kits for. Um, they were the most active ones in the state and, and um, that was going very well. We had a great relationship with that. So that helped us. And then in 2019, BATS became a formal partner with No Wrong Door. Um, so that was a uh, key. Had we known back then what we were doing, it was a great thing because that was one of the criteria that was needed to be a subrecipient of the CARES Act funding for us. Uh, so then VATS wrote a proposal and budget and submitted to No Wrong Door and then No Wrong Door submitted it, submitted that for federal CARES Act funding and we got it. Yes, yeah, next slide, you were right. So CARES, VATS CARES Act funding, our goal was is to enhance access for older adults and Virginians with disabilities by addressing safety, mobility, independence and social inclusion during COVID-19 pandemic and future epidemics and pandemics. And our budget is $150,000. Next slide. So the budget, we broke it down into six different components for our funding. The first one was tele-rehab, and that really um, helped us. We were able, to, can, were able to purchase iPads and Android tablets and provide them on short-term loan basis to our um, VR program and to AAAs to continue to work with clients virtually. Um, AT equipment, demo training, loan, marketing, and shipping. So we were um, able to get some new equipment. And with that equipment, we broke them down into three different kits. And I'll talk about that in a minute. And then sanita sanitization equipment supplies. That's self-explanatory there. Emergency preparedness, sanitization equipment for VAT subcontractors for durable medical equipment reuse program. So um, we were able to um, expand that program or help that program by giving them some uh, support to get some updated equi sanitization equipment and some new equipment just to help with the process of keeping that equipment um, sanitized. And then I think I skipped home ingress and egress. Um, we already have established a ramps program in Virginia for a temporary ramp and accessible pathways. And it was nice to be able to expand that ramp program. And then last but not least, No Wrong Door AT Specialist Access Coordinator. And this was awesome to be able to add a new position. And Paula Martin is on this um, webinar and she, um, or presentation, and she is our new AT Specialist Access Coordinator. And that role uh, was to, is to be able to be the liaison between that Department of Rehab Services and No Wrong Door, and to access the No Wrong Door referral network and manage referrals, and then coordinate and implement the No Wrong Door AT kit, which is a nice little segue because, segue because I'm gonna go into the kits next. So next slide. We did three different kits with our funding for the equipment that we ordered. And I just have to give kind of a little shout out to um, New Hampshire, because it was at a leadership symposium back in 2017 that um, I think Stacy Driscoll talked about um, kits that they had done, AT kits. And I liked that idea. It was great. It's a great way to get equipment to more people. And um, so we used that information. Now we have kits. So these three kits that we had with this funding, we have an emergency preparedness kit, which is a low tech kit, and then a social health inclusion safety uh, kit, and that's higher technology equipment for the most part, and then a training kit, which is customized training with that staff. And I'll get to each one now separately. So next slide. Emergency preparedness kit. So again, this is a low-tech devices. There's 10 devices, and we have 20 kits. And we um, are dispersing those primarily to the triple A's around the state. So they're gonna house them there. And then the resource guide, it's what's included in the kit besides the equipment, obviously, is a resource guide. There's a, 
a, it's a, there's a picture of each item with a short description and a link to a short instructional, instructional YouTube video for each device in that kit. We also are doing custom video recording of the kit content. Um, that's not a actual instructional video. It's just a quick virtual tour, just an informational tour of what the items are in the kit. And then um, a data collection tool for VAT, so we can certainly use that data. And then again, the No Runger Partners house those kits. So the instructional videos that we're, or not instructional, the informational videos that we're doing will be um, available to no wrong door partners so they can kind of quickly peruse what's in the kit and see what they need um, that will help them. Next slide. The social health kit. So we originally called this kit the social inclusion kit, but then realized that many of the items in the kit weren't specifically for social inclusion, but covered a broader spectrum of social issues. So we changed that name to social health. There's 21 devices in that kit. Um, they are primarily higher tech devices um, and there's seven kits. And some of the items that's in that kit um, are gonna be like your video chat devices, like your Echo Show and your Facebook portal, then some robotic companion pets and an artificial fish tank, uh, mood enhancing lamp, uh, fidget blanket, a digital picture frame, and then some video cameras for indoor and outdoor security safety. So those are just some of the 21 items in there. Um, so the kits are, like I said, housed um, throughout the state for easy access. So because these devices are more costly, the No Wrong Door Partners, the AAAs, they really would rather have us keep them. They didn't want that liability and we're happy with that as well. So we have placed them around the state so that they're quick to access for those in need, depending on where in the state they are. The devices address social inclusion, mental health, and in-home safety. And again, same as the emergency preparedness kit, there's a resource guide with the picture and the short description and a link to just a short little instructional video. And then again, there's another uh, video just for that kit that just quickly uh, tours what's in the, in the kit and just quick information about what those contents are. And then again, the data collection tool is in there for um, the person who is borrowing it to show to clients or train a client on or et cetera can fill out that tool. These, there's a hard copy in each of these kits. So we'll give a hard copy to everyone um, for this guide, but there's also an electronic version of it so they can easily access those links. Next slide. Then the training kit. So the training kit that provides a remote training to participating AAA um, and their constituents on several different topics. So uh, participants receive a picture tutorial based on what was taught at that time so they can have it with them to look at uh, once they go home. The, the idea is that uh, or when they when we're not training them, they'll be able to look at their their picture tutorial and um, see how to to um, do different tasks on that device. Um, and the participants receive a resource guide for more information on the equipment to purchase and pricing for the constituents who are interested in purchasing the equipment. Originally, we thought, oh, it'll be great to be able to, um, you know, we didn't think the the quarantine was going to last for so long. So we thought, oh, in a two, three months or so, we'll be able to have just small groups where there's maybe four or five uh, people in need. And then um, the, the um, counselor, and then we can do the training and um, they'll all be right there like a little classroom, but of course that didn't happen. So we've moved into virtual training with that program and, um, being able to help the, the clients learn how to use the devices to see if it's something that they can manage and then can purchase if they want. This equipment will be housed by VATS and that way we can, um, we loan the equipment out to whoever's in need to train them on it. And then we get it back so we can wipe it clean both internally and externally. Next slide. 
interesting discovery. So David asked us to kind of talk about anything interesting that kind of came up while during this um, COVID time and, and with these kids, et cetera. So we did a survey with the AAA when we first got the funding to say, what exactly are you most interested in? And we had our own ideas of what they were gonna say, but really um, we, were, we were surprised by some of the answers. So um, they were very interested in the training. They loved that idea. Um, and they love the idea that that we house the equipment instead of them, um, which in the past with kids, they really wanted the equipment there on their site. So it was nice, you know, to see that um, that they, they came through and said, no, you guys keep that equipment. This uh, new um, sparked a new interest in emergency preparedness. So we've been trying to kind of push emergency preparedness for years and years and years, but with different um, you know, emergencies that happen naturally. And, um, you know, it did, it, that interest wasn't so much there, but now the AAAs really were interested in that emergency preparedness kit. And that's why we have so many of those and are distributing those through the AAAs. I think people are, um, you know, like even in this winter, we had some ice and people were without power for a long time and people aren't able to go elsewhere because of Social of being able having to stay home, so I think they realize, gosh, we really do need to be prepared when these things happen. Social health items. Um, so we thought maybe they'd be more interested in the social inclusion items, like the the video chats or video calls, and and those types of items. But they were really interested in items that reduce depression and anxiety. So um, other than training. AAAs are more interested in, in items that don't require internet. So they wanted more the low tech items than the higher tech items. Another um, extra that I that we had discovered was um, our adult reuse program had a huge surge in equipment needs during COVID. People uh, were that were in the hospital, we all know the hospital discharges them a little bit sooner than maybe they need to be physically but um, they were really discharging them even quicker with COVID. So people were not wanting to be discharged to nursing facilities um, just because of the, the outbreaks that they were having with COVID and, and really more than anything, just the, the scary idea of being isolated in nursing facilities. Um, so they wanted to go home or go with family members. So our reuse program had a huge surge, like I said, a big demand of equipment um, needs for people that were discharged home. So um, it was nice that we could support them and help them get more um, equipment to help sanitize. Next slide. And that's it. So um, there's just some contact information for you all and our phone numbers. There's um, who is in charge of each specific kit here at VATS. And then of course there's Barkley, who's just the, the big cheese. So that's it for that. So any questions um, for any of us, we're here and I'm just gonna stay on the phone. Thank you very much, ladies. Um, a wealth of information for all of us. Thank you. I'm uh, reviewing the chat, see if there's any questions. Now, um, because this is a webinar, the attendees are muted and their video is off, but we can let them raise their hands and unmute them if we want to take questions that way. Just letting you know. I'm not seeing <laughs> magical answers. Too Actually, much. Amy uh, Perrin from um, Minnesota has her hand up. I'm going to unmute her for you. Oh, that's Amy? embarrassing. I did not mean to have my hand up. I apologize. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> awesome information though, you guys, this is really appreciated. Thank you. Um, I just saw, was it Laura? Wanted me to share my slides. Um, do we have these available to, for them to um, look at on the, on the app, Dave? Or if not, I can absolutely send them to anyone who wants them. So, sorry, was the question whether or not the slides will be shared? Um, let me yeah. back up here. Yes, the slides from today's presentation will be shared with all of you uh, following the leadership symposium. I know um, Misty had a, a question in the question and answer section about um, the uh, Lebo book stands and um, she, they were charging her an exorbitant amount of shipping. I, I, I would suggest calling them. I don't know if that'll help um, with shipping to Alaska. I, I know we pay the retail price of $189.99 and get free shipping. Um, so I don't know if that's something we worked out or if that's just standard in the, in the uh, continuous 59, 59 states. Yeah, we just got nine more. <laughs> Misty uh, also asked if there were any tips on how to train ALH or senior center staff on modeling AAC for adults. Good question. Um, we're still in the stages. Uh, I, I, that would have to be a probably a good conversation. I don't have anything right now. Maybe you guys do. There are some good resources put out by the patient provider network regarding mm -hmm. AAC in medical facilities, but um, they've got a video series and there is a link to it in the Padlet that I is on is linked in my first slide. Thank you, Krista. We also have a question from Alan Canoe in Washington. In all of these cases, did the agencies approach you or did you reach out for these partnerships? You want to start, Krista? I did a lot of playing uh, spider at the center of the web and reaching out at the beginning of the pandemic. Um, and because Idaho is small enough, the network um, is pretty connected anyway. So there was some of both. For us, they reached out to us. Um, for some of our other partnerships that we've actually reached out to them. I mean, not partnerships, but the um, opportunities we've had with aging services, we've reached out to them, said, hey, don't forget us. Um, so. so for Virginia, um, it really was key that we did reach out to them years ago to um, start that relationship with AAAs to and do the kit and then becoming a no wrong door member for us, we have to become a member and it's, it's costly. So we kind of debated it, but we did become a member. And then uh, when the funding came available, I think we kind of reached out to each other and, and went from there. So, but having that relationship already in place really was key for us. Yeah. I should also mention that both uh, Lori Brooks in Oregon and Patrick Zerny in South Dakota have checked on the Levo. Uh, and from Amazon, it's $189.99 with free shipping to both South Dakota and Oregon. Misty just replied in the question and answer and she said it was an Alaska thing. That really, ugh, that's horrible. Maybe you can work with them, tell them what it's for, tell them it's for individuals with disabilities and We'll see. <laughs> Anybody else has any other questions that they'd like to add into the chat box? Seeing 
Sí. Oops, another one. Uh, Kay Spetka has asked the question, is no wrong door a national entity or specific to certain states? Uh, Kay, the answer to that question is, every state has a no wrong door system. They look differently from state to state, but it is a, a national program that's overseen by the Administration for Community Living. And uh, we'd be happy to share more resources with you about that following the symposium. As an FYI, I went through um, selecting iPad cases in the same way I did the, the feature matching for headphones. So if anybody wants um, to touch base with me on iPad cases, <laughs> which ones are um, antimicrobial and which one, you know, feel free to get, get in touch. That's some good information. <laughs> and I've started down the path of doing that with the uh, um, pocket talker alternatives as well. Um. Yeah. You know, it was um, one of the um, nursing homes, they, they contacted us about the, um, they wanted to get a $200 microphone to slap onto the back of uh, their iPad and thinking, you know, for the purpose of, of um, letting their residents be heard. And of course we said, how about a $35 voice amplifier? And, um, and then you can have five of them or let me more, I can't do math today. Um, and then you'll be able to do one-on-one -on -one communication after COVID. And, you know, they never even heard of such a thing. And so it was pretty, that, that was a fun conversation to have. Anything else, Dave? I will tell you that we have no more questions in the Q&A or the chat box. Uh, we have taken up the, most of our time. So at this uh, point- uh, I'm, I'm sorry, there's one more question from Tracy in uh, New Mexico. Yeah. Uh, what Oops, did I see? Is. Yeah, Tracy's asking, I've heard a lot about kits but challenges with equipment being housed with these groups, sanitization, using them, getting satisfaction data. Does anyone have agreement verbiage to encourage using designated equipment that is not so hard, <laughs> difficult? <laughs> housed. It is housed with them. We had a, um, them sign a, an agreement saying that they would use the equipment for specific purposes. And I can get you that, Tracy, and I can just send it to Dave and you can get it out to everyone. And we also had a contract with Aging Services for our COVID grants. Well, if, if that's all, I, I do have one announcement. We have had two bingo winners, Ugh. Lori Brooks. <laughs> and Melinda Dolzal, so congratulations to them. Pressure's on. Pressure's on. Well, thank you everybody. We'll take a 15 minute break during which uh, if you have opportunity to check out the one big thing video highlights that were submitted, please do. Uh, do what you need to do to take care of yourself and. Rejoin us for the next session at uh, 1.45 p.m. Eastern Time, Establishing and Building Partnerships for Disability Agencies and Organizations. Thank you all, and we'll see you in a bit.